It's go time. Welcome to week four of doing sports God's way. Um, tonight's going to be a special night. Uh, and so uh, before we get started, once again, uh, this is just us getting together, Nebraska FCA, every Sunday night through July 26th, uh, just to spend time together learning how to honor Jesus in the middle of sports. And so tonight, um, got a special speaker all the way from Lubbock, Texas. Um, and he's going to talk about focal points tonight. So um, a couple of things uh, just within the world. Um, this week, there was some heartache um, and just some things that had happened. And so um, I guess that uh, Chris just kind of informed me that uh, one of his students at Lubbock Christian, her name was Brooklyn Boyer. Um, she was in a swimming accident this week. Um, and has a neck injury, and so she's rehabbing in Colorado, so we're going to lift her up tonight, um, and so if you guys would do that, and then also uh, Chris Gadsden, um, uh, Omaha FCA staffer, uh, it was his birthday on Friday, uh, out on a walk with his wife, and had a sudden heart attack, and, and passed away, and so just some heavy hearts within the FCA family this week, and so as I open up in prayer, I just pray, I, I just hope that you guys just, uh, just, take some time and, and just count your blessings, but also um, just uh, think about their families and, and just kind of what they're going through and things. And, and as we go throughout our week that, that we can just uplift them in prayer. So if you guys would just bow your heads with me, um, we'll get into it. Heavenly Father, God, we just humbly come before you. We just thank you um, just for your, your power, Lord. And just in the midst of pain, in the midst of hurt, Lord, just how good you are, Lord. Um, I just pray, Lord, specifically for the Boyer family and, and specifically Brooklyn. I just pray, God, as she's probably uh, just asking a lot of questions. Um, and, and then I just pray, Lord, that you would just meet her where she's at, meet her family, Lord, and that just her testimony of, of what she's going through, Lord, would just turn hearts and eyes and minds to you, Father. Father, I just pray for her recovery. I just pray, Lord, that she would have a full recovery, Lord. Um, and just be with her just at the, their time, just in Colorado right now, Lord. Uh, and I just lift up the Gadsden family, Lord. Um, we lost just a soldier uh, on Friday, God, but I know he's up there just, just partying with you, Father, and having the biggest birthday party, God. But I, I just I know that our hope doesn't stop in this world, Lord, and just the hope in you um, and that our day, you know, our time's going to come up someday, but that we can have um, that hope of eternity just spending with you. Um, and, and so I just pray, Lord, that you would just meet us here tonight. I just pray for Chris. I just pray that his words would be your words, Lord, that you would just speak through him as he talks about focal points and just be with the faith fit guys, um, tonight as well, Lord, as they lead us through our workout. So, uh, we love you. We honor you. Uh, we just commit this time to you, your name. Amen. All right. So all the way from Lubbock, Texas tonight. Uh, he's a Nebraska boy from Grant, Nebraska, played football at Wesley, and Chris and I go back really far. Um, but him and his family, like I said, reside in Lubbock, Texas. Uh, his wife and his three or his four kids now. And um, he is the, the head athletic director and the head football coach at Lubbock Christian High School in Lubbock, Texas. And so the opportunity that we have through social or through Zoom. Um, it's pretty cool that we can connect all the dots and, and bring him in here tonight. So, Chris, welcome. We're excited to have you. Thanks, Mal. Yeah, special to get introduced by Mal. We go way back, and I think Mal used to take me up to, was it Godstock? Is that what it's called back in the day? Uh, so, a lot of fun memories there. Obviously, his parents are, are um, staples in, in Nebraska FCA and, 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 and followers of Jesus Christ. And and, and I also want to thank everybody there at Nebraska FCA. It's been a long time since I've been uh, with you guys, but, you know, I'm biased, but I certainly think that Nebraska FCA is, is one of the tops in the nation. Now, I think you guys do special things. I think you guys are creative. I think you guys adhere to the gospel. And, and I have a lot of uh, brothers and sisters in the faith that I'm, that I'm big fans of and, and friends with there at Nebraska FCA. So thank you guys for that. And then to everybody that's listening live or that you'll listen back on on YouTube, I, and I encourage you to go back and check out everybody's talk so far. They've been fantastic. Gordon last week, really fancy with the PowerPoint and the slides. I mean, I had to bring, I had to bring my little brother down here, the, the Nebraska connection right here, Kurt Soffley. I had to bring him in just to make sure I turned the computer on and got the internet working. 
So all of Nebraska, here's, here's a wayward soul. Kurt Softley's been with us hey, now for two years. Here's, here's some Nebraska proof down there you go. Go Big Red. There you go. So <clears throat> all that to say, thank you guys for having me. And, and this is a wonderful uh, sequence and setup that you guys have here. I think it's eight weeks, and so I love that. I'm going to talk today about focal point. And so the first thing I want to do is I want to teach you how to catch football, okay? And, and just stay with me, okay, if you're not a football person. But, you know, Ron Brown taught me this. And I use it every year with my kids. If, if some of my kids are on this call and they may be, they're, they're probably smiling right now because they get this every year. John Wooden used to say, you know, uh, this is a basketball. And Vince Lombardi used to say, this is a football. We kind of do the same thing. But it's about how to catch a football. And here's how we teach. <clears throat> There's four panels right here on a football. And as you can see right there, they come together and the seams – Make a cross. So we talk to our kids from the very beginning about Hebrews 12 too, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. And, and we just tell them that, hey, the best way to catch a football is for you to aim small, miss small. If you have great cross eyes, yes, we want our kids to play cross-eyed. We want them to be totally focused on the cross when they're trying to catch a football, ignoring all the distractions and the stimulus that an opposing defense um, or the fans and the pageantry of, of Friday Night Lights provide and just focusing on that simple cross right here. That's how we teach them to catch a football. And then we teach them that that's also how we want them to live their lives. We want them to live a cross-centered life. We want to always be able to keep their eyes on the cross amidst the distractions of life. And so that's where I want to start today. The definition of focal point as, as we use it is to direct or redirect one's attention. So it's like a reminder. And the first question you should ask yourself is, okay, a reminder of what? Well, I can go buy a, a certain store um, and that can remind me of my wife. I need to buy her flowers. I can go buy a restaurant that can be, remind me of a date. But, but what we want to say here is we want these focal points to be reminding you of your, of your aim or your utmost mission in life. And so in a, in a simple way, we say that's to know Christ and to grow in Christ. We try to make it really simple. So a focal point reminds me to know Christ and then to continue to grow in knowing Christ. Um, you've probably heard other people use similar language like uh, to submit to the spirit, to focus your mind on the things above, uh, to think rightly, to think in line with scripture. But let me switch my screen here and show you one of our verses that we use here at Lubbock Christian. And again, uh, this is uh, me needing uh, my brother here. Okay. I'm sharing my screen here. Here's one of our verses that we're going to use today, okay? And it comes out in Numbers. Numbers 15, 37 through 40. So we're in the Old Testament, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers. The Lord said to Moses, speak to the Israelites and say to them, throughout the generations to come, you're to make tassels on the corners of your garments with a blue cord on each tassel. You'll have these tassels to look at. And so you will remember, there's that word, all the commands of the Lord that you may obey them and not prostitute yourselves by chasing after the lusts of your own heart and eyes. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Then you will remember to obey all my commands and will be consecrated to your God. So Numbers 15, 37 through 40 right there, first verse. And here's the point. Way back in the Old Testament, God is already helping us because we are prone to wander, just like the old Old church hymn says, prone to wander, Lord, I feel it, prone to leave the God I love. Uh, we have an ability to focus, and then we squirrel, and it's like the movie Up, right? We just watched it with my kids, so that's what came to my mind. But we are easily distracted. We lose focus. And so it's not only the ability to be reminded and to focus, but it's the ability to refocus when I get distracted. Some of you guys on this call probably have already lost focus once or twice, and that's okay we want to meet you where you're at. We want to train you how to refocus and to find something like a blue tassel, as God says in Numbers, that will get our mind back on the things above. We say where your focus goes, your energy goes. It's just like riding a bike. Okay, My, my five-year-old just learned how to ride without training wheels, and, and now we're kind of on to the next segment of where your eyes go is where the bike's going to go. So you see a cute turtle, at, you know, you can finish the story. But the point is, is where our eyes goes, our energy goes. And we want to refocus. Okay, I saw the turtle. I'm back on track. Here's my sight line, and this is my straight path that I'm walking. We want to be able to refocus when we lose focus. Something we say to our kids is we say, where are you? Where are you right now? And they're going to respond with, I'm right here. I'm right now. 
And it's a good chance for even as adults, you know, my wife's telling me about her day and, and maybe my mind starts wandering and she's going, Chris, where are you? And I'm like, that's right. That's my cue to refocus. I'm right here. I'm right now. I'm giving you my best. Sorry about that. Here I am. I've refocused. That's what a focal point does. Jim Elliott, you guys look up Jim Elliott if you get a chance. Okay, Wheaton College um, went, went to be a missionary. There's a, a movie made after him um, about him uh, basically giving his life for the cause of Christ. And he says, wherever you are, be all there. And I love that. We talk about living life to the fullest. Uh, we believe the best way to live the, the maximum life or a max out as what we call it is to be connected, to be fully integrated, to have the cross set your path daily, to be fully integrated. Wherever you are, be fully there. And this even applies with good things. Okay, I've used some examples about being distracted by bad things. But listen, if it's the fourth quarter of the game and I pull my receiver aside and I'm like, hey, man, what are you smiling about? And he's going, man, that catch I made in the second quarter, that was big time. It's going to be on a highlight reel tonight. That was big time. Well, that's, that's a good opportunity for me as a coach to remind him or redirect his attention back to, to right here, right now. I need you where your feet are. Listen. Yes, sir. Thank you for that catch. That was awesome. But you and I know that you dwelling in the past is not going to help you perform optimally right here in this moment. I need you right here, right now. Let's refocus. The second verse, I'm going to share my screen again. The second verse comes out of Deuteronomy. Okay. And Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 9. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Many of you guys are probably memorizing this verse with your children at home. And if you're not, I would encourage you to do this. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your heart. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hand and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. So there you go at the very end, you see tying them, tying them as symbols. Uh, you know, maybe it's a wrist bracelet, maybe it's something else, writing them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. You see multiple language just in that one verse alone that shows you the, the importance of us redirecting our attention back on what is most important. And God being, God being understanding of our wandering and going, hey guys, I'm trying to help you here. Listen to me. If you'll follow those blue tassels, you'll, you'll remember to obey your God and obey his commands. If you'll tie these as symbols on your wrist, you'll remember to live in obedience to me and to know my son and to follow my son. And then one more, I won't even make you look up, but it's in Genesis. And so we went Numbers, Deuteronomy, Genesis. And, and the question is, is what do you think of when you think of a rainbow? Do you remember the story? God's, God's speaking and he says, from ages to come, when you see a rainbow, it will remind you and me that I will never flood the earth again that I love my people, I'm patient with my people. You know, it talks about that in the New Testament. Uh, God's not slow in keeping his promises, as some understand slowness, but he's patient with us, wanting everyone to come to an understanding and a saving grace and found in him. And so a reminder is also, I'm sorry, a rainbow is also a reminder. It's also a focal point for us. He set up these reminders for us. We want to do the same for our kids. Now, let me give you a caution right here, okay? The thing doesn't matter. The football, the tassel, the symbols, they don't matter. It's, it's certainly not about worshiping the tassel. It's not even about worshiping the cross. And that's a deeper discussion for another day. But, but I, would, I would go to my pastors and my leaders on that. It, it's not about the cross. It's not, it's not our lucky rabbit's foot. It's, it's having the ability to refocus back on God, back on the, the one Lord, the one God that we have, the Savior in Jesus Christ, focusing our minds on our audience of one. And, and the verse on that would be in Exodus 20. You know, God says, you shall not make for yourself an image in the form of anything in heaven above or on the earth below or in the waters beneath. Do not bow down to them and do not worship them. And so what it's saying is to worship such an image, uh, to acknowledge something as God or even pretend it is God, like I'm going to serve it, is to commit the sin of idolatry. And it's, it's worshiping the creation rather than the creator. And if you have been a part of doing sports God's way for a long time, you know that idolatry is a word that's going to be used very often because in the game of football, idolatry comes out Friday nights, trophies, um, contracts, um, rankings. We, we can idolize a lot of things. And I do not want focal point to fall across the line of us thinking that this is some, um, this some tangible way for us to now have, it's okay for us to have an idol. No way. It's all about the, the author and perfecter of our faith. It's not about, 
This, it's about what it makes us remember and what it redirects our attention back to. Okay, now, uh, if you've lost focus, let's have, a, let's have a quick deep breath here. Focal point, redirects your attention back to something. We've seen examples of tassels, scripture, uh, the forehead, the gates, the door frames, the football. Why? Well, we believe that everything you do is an act of worship, and it just matters to whom or what you're worshiping. And so right now you should be asking the question, okay, if I have poor focus, then what am I worshiping? And I would tell you this, I would say, let's try a quick activity. Let's say that, let's say that Nate Lewis told me that we didn't have a speaker for next week. And he said, he's going to randomly pick one of you that's listening right now. And you're going to be the speaker of next week. And just think about it for that for just a little bit. And so, so how do you feel right now? You start thinking about what you're going to say. Does fear creep in? We know automatic, we, we know by studies that the number one fear of man is the fear of public speaking. I think second is heights and third is bugs and spiders and snakes. But the number one fear is public speaking. So just with a little example there, if you, if you played along with me and you thought, man, if I'm on the call next week, what am I going to say? What are they going to think? Oh no, woe is me. Well, you can see right there who's the focus on. It's on you. It's on you and it's off of God. And that would be my answer to what do I think about when I'm not thinking rightly is likely you're thinking about yourself. You're probably in a very self-serving, selfish frame of mind. We all are. And that's why we have to have these focal points set up for us. And let me give you another one that's not tangible, but it's questions that we ask our kids about identity. And it, it, it's, who am I? Not Chris Softly, but, but who am I? Well, I'm a son. I'm a father. I'm an employee. I'm a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm an ambassador of the King. Uh, those are who I am, even above the other things I just said. Whose am I? Who has ultimate authority on me? When I believe something, I'm going to ask the question, says who? Ultimately, you teach me something from these podcasts or these YouTubes, um, says who? Well, if it's coming from scripture, I'm in on that because that's my authority. That's whose I am as well. And then what's my purpose? We like to ask our kids that because that's a hard question for high school kids to answer. And yet those deep, hard questions, we don't speak about them often enough because if you're able to wake up in the morning and remind yourself of who you are, whose you are, and what your purpose is, what God's created you to do, then you'll have a better frame of mind to go attack the day in a god honoring way. And even better than that, how about when you're in the midst of a challenge or an adversity? Isn't that the best time for you to have a focal point that reminds you, wait a minute, I'm a child of the, of the, of the king. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a co-heir with Christ. God saw me and loved me enough to send his son in my place. Okay, okay, I can stand up a little taller and I can walk through this adversity with confidence that I know who I am and whose I am. That's a focal point. Those, those personal x-ray questions. It also would get your focus off of you and back on the one who deserves your focus. Uh, and, and that's what I wanna close with here is that's likely the number one struggle that you and I and, and you'll find all of us in the Christian faith uh, wrestle with. And that is that uh, ultimately I'm, I'm really selfish. And focal points are reminders to get your eyes off of yourselves and off of life's distractions and fix your eyes back on Christ. It's just like catching a football. There's so much to see. And yet if I can clear the mechanism and I can eliminate the noise and I can be aim small, miss small, have my eyes on the cross, it's going to give me the best chance to catch that football. It's going to be the best chance to succeed in life, not in the things that don't matter, but in living a fruitful and holy life for the one who created us for it. Let me end with one more quick story here. It's the story of a farmer's watch, okay? And uh, let's pretend I have a friend named Robbie uh, T. We'll just call him T for short, okay? Robbie T. All right, well, when Robbie was a kid, he went to his, his grandpa's farm, and all the cousins were there, and there's, there's 15 of them, and, and they love to get together. Well, they his, his grandpa's got this watch. You know, it's one of those watches. It's a circle one, and uh, it's, it's got this timer right here, and it's, it's got the face right here. It's gold plate on the back. You can kind of picture it. It's not a wristwatch. It's one of those old ones that, the, that a grandpa would keep in his, in his pocket. But Robbie asked for this watch, and, and they went out and played. And they're playing tag, and they're jumping from the second story of the barn onto the, onto the hay bales, and the hay bales are busting, and they're hooting and hollering. They're having a fun time. They're laughing. They're telling stories. He is not focused on the watch. And pretty soon he looks around and he goes, oh no, guys, I lost the watch. I lost grandpa's watch. And everybody goes into panic mode. 
Robbie most of all. And what, what's he thinking? Oh no, woe is me. I'm so foolish. I'm going to get whooped. Grandpa's never going to trust me again. Oh no, oh no, oh no. And they're going crazy. And it is pure chaos in that bar. Hay's flying. They're, they're throwing pitchforks. They're looking under. They're trying to find it. Finally, Robbie has to humble himself and he goes to granddad and he says, granddad, I'm so sorry. I lost your watch. Granddad, man full of wisdom, has been through life. Walks him out there. He tells the other cousin, says, everybody out. They step in and Robbie goes, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so stupid. I'm so foolish. I'm so sorry. And he goes, Robbie, please be quiet. Tick, 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 tick. Robbie looks up at grandpa. He's like, I hear it. I hear it. They walk over, move a bale aside, pick it up. Tick, tick, tick. Robbie's like, how'd you do that? Grandpa takes him outside and goes, here's the deal. Sometimes you lose focus. And if you would realize that that clock is always going to tick. It's right there. It's waiting for you to find it. You just need to get your mind back on it. How do you do that? You go from the chaos, everybody trying to find it, to the calm of everybody be quiet. The best thing I can do right now is get my mind set on the things above. That I can get my mind set on the metronome of scripture, of the tick, tick, tick of God's word. And when I do, Amidst all the chaos of the barn and the fun and the hay and the distractions of life, I'm back in alignment and I find the watch. And I think that's a great story because, again, it fits parallel with everything we're talking about. It's a focal point. It's about redirecting our attention back on that which matters most. And so I would just end with there's, there's two ways of wisdom. There's, there's the way of the world and there's the way of the word. And we know in John 1.14, Jesus says, uh, you know, the, John says, the word became flesh in Jesus and made his dwelling among us. And so I want to encourage you guys, be committed to walking this walk, uh, to fight in the good fight of faith, and set up for yourself some focal points when you walk into an opposing gym. Find a cross in the brick and the mortar uh, underneath that hoop. Um, find an empty chair in the audience and picture your Lord and Savior right there cheering you on. And guess what? It doesn't matter if you're playing or not. You, he's cheering you on to be the best teammate you can be from the end of the bench. Stand up and shake everybody's hands. Yes, sir. No, sir. With coach, no grumbling and complaining, no locking eyes with your mom and dad going, yeah, I know coach should put me in. We're, we'd win if I was in. No, you're focused on what matters most. Your eyes are on the cross and on your audience one. And so it's with that. I close. Thank you guys for having me on all the way from Texas and uh, whatever's next. You guys rock it. If it's Malachi or you guys with the faith fit, love what you're doing with the faith fit. Uh, we're going to use that probably this year. Okay. We're very thankful for all of you guys. Thank you guys.